Next up, we have Dr. David Shorman. Uh, he is founder of Dive Interactive Education, uh, which provides 21st century mathematics and science with a Christian foundation. He also works on biomimetic surf designs, including modeling a surf fin off of a whale pectoral fin. Uh, and lastly, he has degrees in aerospace engineering, marine chemistry, and limnology. Uh, importantly to me, he's my high school math and science teacher, and he's a great friend. So let's give it up for Dr. David Shorman. Thank you, Joe. And all of us have PhDs. He just called me that because he's my student and has a really hard time calling me by my first name. Um, very respectful young man. I don't know if we introduced him. This is Jonah Swanson, by the way. So thank you, Jonah. Uh, I'm going to talk about just learning from humpback whales and what we what we learned in the last few years about that, and just an overview here. And I brought this fishing pole, guys. Uh, so uh, validating CFD. That means computational fluid dynamics. I'm going to try to say CFD a lot, so that's what that means. What LUCA does for use in surfboard fin research and design, and then exploring non standard fin design of the whale applications. So, new ideas you usually start with a question. My question after I saw Aaron Gold set this world record, and uh, awesome guy, um, and is how do you make surfing safer? How could you do that? And you know, in a safer way, maybe. And so, I was just talking to him one day after church, and um, I, it was just kind of a weird thing. I don't even know why I thought of you know biomimetic designs. I started thinking of sharks, dolphins, and I started reading, and, and I discovered there's been a lot of research on humpback whales, and something that would provide stability, more stability and control, is what I was trying to think of, and that's. Why I landed on humpback whales. They have a unique flipper design, and since about 2000 or so, there's been hundreds of papers on tubercle designs. And so these bumps, you see those on the leading edge, those are called tubercles. There's also bumps on the back called crenulations. And you can see that, like I've got a T1, T4, I've numbered them there. You can see how those are bigger than some of the other ones, but there's about 13 of them typically. And there's other flow control features as well, but two things that they do, uh, they have a delayed stall and a gradual stall, and they're typically more efficient than, you know, what we're used to is, we're, we're used to, on airplanes, everything, it's got a smooth leading edge, right? And so, uh, and just real quick, if has anybody been in an airplane and like done the, you pull the yoke back until the plane stalls? Um, so some of y'all probably know what I'm talking about there, but that's that has to do with angle of attack. And so if the flow's coming this way, you know, you just pull the yoke back and the plane goes up, 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 like that. And there's a point where the flow coming in, it can't make that corner. And and it separates and then the wing stalls. So if you can keep going up, up, up even farther, that would be delayed stall. If you keep going up, up, up and it just and it does stall, but it doesn't just suddenly drop like that, but just a little bit, that would be gradual stall. And those are some of the, the features of tubercle designs. So there's a, a 2011 research paper that I looked at, and uh, uh, one of the, the main researchers on this, believe it or not, his name is Frank Fish, <laughs> and uh, one of the, the first on tubercle designs, but uh, he wrote this paper on um, marine applications, rudders, dive planes, water turbines, propellers, and of course surfboard fins. And from the paper it said, the addition of tubercles will provide enhanced control during a cutback when a surfer rapidly changes direction. So here's a few designs of different people have, have come up with over the years. And uh, I believe that was 2016 maybe, uh, one of Kelly Slater's boards. And uh, there is, uh, what was it? Um, there's one of the surf magazines had a had an article about this, but that's really not tubercles. That's more channels because a tubercle it sticks out. So, but anyway, it's just the end of fifty there. Um, so, I talked about this a little bit uh, at the in the intro, but 
this is our, as you can see, this is our first published research here, and a performance evaluation of a humpback whale hydrofoil design. It's a longboard fin, is really what it was. And so when you want to do research like this, you have a control, and I had a control with uh, standard tubercles, which means just like a regular up-down, kind of consistent pattern the whole way. And then I have a patent pending design that I can apply to any airfoil shape that mimics that whale pattern better. Not just the tubercles, not just the crenulations, there's other, other things going on as well. And so that's, I call that the RW. And so this graph is, uh, I mentioned efficiency before, and uh, so anything above this, uh, these, are, these are ratios here. Um, sorry, it's a little bit cut off down there, but this is angle of attack. So, you know, over here is real steep, over here is about zero. Um, yeah, so out to 30 degrees. 15 degrees is typically where, where wings stall, but, but these, they, um, they stall at a much higher angle of attack. But, but anyway, this is efficiency, and these are ratios. This is, the triangle is the real well fin to the tubercle design, and then the square. They both, both patterns basically match, match each other, the real well compared to the control. In both cases, comparing the real well to the other two designs, it had better lift over drag. So more efficient. It's a more efficient fin. And that's what the CFD told us. And so this was static CFD. It's basically a snapshot. You know, Luca showed some motion videos. And those motion videos, by the way, those are typically 8 tenths of a second. And they're 400 images in 8 tenths of a second. These, this is one image, two, three, four, five, six images. So it's a lot different uh, what, what Luca's doing compared to what I did. This is like pre-Luca here. And, but it still has lots of good information in it though. And so some more about that, that delayed and gradual stall here you can see. Here's the control. And so zero, what is that? Yeah, zero, 10, 20, 30. Angle of attack. So getting stronger, stronger angle of attack. The red is stalled, so you can see, I mean, just look, especially this one here, actually that's 25, but you can see there the red, look how little on the real well design is stalled. And then the tubercle, a little bit more, the control a lot more, it's like this big sheet of separation right there. Sometimes also that can be an area of cavitation as well. So think about surfing, think about, you know, this is, the flow coming into this is like laminar smooth flow, but in the water it's never, I mean there's water going all kinds of different directions, right? So if it's, you know, you're going straight through the, through the water and you hit a pocket of turbulence, maybe one part of these fins is gonna stall, but the rest will be okay. And that's one thing that, that's one benefit of that tubercle design when you see that. In, in the CFD. So then uh, met Mark and he showed me how to do field research using the, the trace device. And so basically um, what, what I did there, 665 waves alternated monthly between this control fin and then this is a, a carbon fiber replica, 3D printed, made a mold. Um, Nate can tell you more about that because he made this um, awesome, super strong carbon fiber fin there and um, switched those monthly and collected lots of data. We collected wave energy data too because if I do all the control ones in wave energy that's twice as much as the, the well you really can't compare that and fortunately it came out they, there was like no significant difference between wave energies for these. So for max speed this is uh, kilometers per hour so the, the real well is about 3% faster than the control. And, and that's what we'd expect. It's more efficient, it's gonna go faster, right? And it'd probably go farther, too. And, um, I mean, it's not much, but I mean, it's a, it's a fin on a nine and a half foot long board. So, you know, there's, you wouldn't, you wouldn't expect just a lot. And in aerospace, they say 3% is, a good number is that if you can get a three percent difference there's there's something going on there now this is top ten percent of waves 
got more like a 5% difference there, about 36 kilometers, a little under 35 there for the control. And distance, again, uh, kind of a similar thing there. The, the real well was more than the control and on, on distance surfed. And top 10% was like a 40% difference, so uh, almost 250 meter for the top 10% of waves, which would be about 66 waves, 67 waves. Okay, so basically what that did, and for, to our knowledge, that's the first time anybody has ever validated CFD using field research in surfing. And so we were able to show that that is a, a good tool. It matched the, the field results. So kind of going on a timeline here, at, while I was talking to Mark about the, using the trace and trying to figure out a 3D printing method, we were doing shortboard fins as well. And so we started doing, uh, some of my friends basically, and uh, started doing a shortboard fin field research but before I met Luca. So, so we did this first field research on shortboard fins. So I'm switching over to shortboard fins now. And control designs again, smooth leading edge with tubercle thruster sets. And we were able to, I had three different surfers. We were able to rank them by skill level. Uh, there's a, a research paper by Hutt and others, J.A. Hutt, I think, and others, that he did a really good comparison and, and allowed us to, to show who was skill level six, who was seven, who was eight. And then there's also trace data. Trace data is publicly available for a top ranked WCT surfer. So we were able to um, look at that data as well. Right now we can get 18 different parameters off the trace as far as turn performance, speed, all these different things. This is just one of the numbers. This is power output in watts. You can see there's a really big difference between WCT and a skill level six server and just as they do a turn and how much power that they can generate. And I mean that kind of makes sense, right? If you're more of an intermediate level surfer, you're just going to maybe be more gradual, maybe not as strong, and so um, you're just not going to generate as much power in a turn. And, and a lot of that number has to do with how fast you can turn your turn rate. So uh, not as much difference between eight and nine, but I, I believe that still was a significant difference. So, so that's, that's for all of the data right there for my, my three different skill level surfers there. And, um, both both fins together in that. Now here's control versus real well design for the shortboard fins, and so we had quite a bit different uh, results there, and I think that was 16 percent difference there, an improvement in the real well. Looking at all three surfers there and their average turn power. Again, though, that's just one of our our numbers there. Most of them were better for the for the real well. So to validate that again, kind of the same way we did the longboard, we use CFD and we use motion CFD now that I knew Luca. <laughs> and so this is just one simulation we've got lots of. If you go on our Surf Engineers website and, and our, our little card back there, if you grab one of those, it has our contact info and our website on there. But you can see, you can see maybe you saw the vortices going off of that. Maybe I can run this one more time here real quick. But red is high pressure, blue is low pressure. And one thing to watch is see that turbulence and see how that the flow coming off the right fin and that and that right turn is hitting the center fin there. And so that center fin is getting a lot of turbulent flow um, coming into that. And also the right fin off the rail, it gets flow coming under off the rail. And so how, how does that affect the fins themselves? So three key results we saw with the shortboard fin results. The differences due to skill level, different uh, delayed and gradual stall. We saw that too, what I mentioned earlier. And then I, I don't know for sure what to call it, called turbulence damping. Uh, you'll see here in just a second. But here's differences due to skill level. So this is time. Uh, like I mentioned, our turns would go for 0.8 seconds. And what we did was we took the turn rates from our field research, the average turn rates for the intermediate, uh, the different skill levels, 
intermediate, advanced, seven, seven, eight, we combined those together to call that an uh, expert. And then we had the WCT data. And so we took those turn rates and then Luca put those into the simulation so we could tell, you know, based on their turn rates, and that was, that was the, the yaw, which is normally what you think of in the cutback, that's yaw, and then, but there's three different ones, there's roll pitch and yaw, you pitch up the way the board rolls, right, as you turn, go from a bottom turn to the top, it's rolling. So we had those three values for all three levels. And so you can see clearly some differences here. Here's the intermediate, the red is the real well design, but you can see you know, both of those are lower than the expert skill level, and then again, those are lower than the WCT level. And you know, if you're a short board surfer, I mean, just imagine, you know, as you do that turn, I mean, you're pushing, right? This, this is force, is what this is, is how much force it takes to push and, and make that turn rate, okay? So a higher turn rate, you're just gonna have to push with more force. But look, um, at the higher, at the, the WCT level, it doesn't take as much force to push, uh, uh, to do that turn as it does using a control fin. But for the intermediate level surfer, it, for the most part, it did take more force. So, and, and that matches, that matches what we saw in the field as well. That the, the intermediate level surfer wasn't able to turn, wasn't able to generate as much power as the, with, with the whale fins as with the control. So, and then it, it reversed for our, our expert level. That's the big deal. Right there? Oh, I'm about to talk about that. So, looking at that, that's the delayed and gradual stall <laughs> stuff and, and some of the stability too, okay? So, uh, delayed stall, that's where it stalled. That's where the control fit stalled, okay? This is about where the real well fin stall, okay? And the, but no, notice how it kind of stays higher. Okay, so that's the gradual. It's, it's more gradual, so it's just not as much of a drop. And I mean, this is just one type of control fin. Um, you know, there's, there's lots of other ones we can test. Just because this one did this doesn't mean they all would do that, right? Um, and this is, um, I mean, that's a big drop though. I mean, think about, you know, if you're, pushing against something and all of a sudden it's gone, you know, that you're going to have some stability issues there. So we, um, we tested the crinkle fins and these control fins for CFD and then that's the whale fin. So this is at the end of a turn. And this, this type of turn right here was just a, a slide more so we could pick up what's coming off the rail a little bit more and, and so there was a lot more turbulence in there. But this is this is what the right fin was feeling on that as it as it did that slide. And the the real well design is pretty flat um, compared to both of these. The uh, the crinkle fin had you know had a lot more force to, to turn against which which actually helps you get back in position. Um, so it's maybe a, a little bit better for a barrel, but um, but this this is just a lot more stable. This is and this is at the end of the turn. You can see like 0.6 uh, to 0.8 seconds out here. That was at the end of the turn. So as you're coming out of that turn and getting ready for the next one, um, my skill level eight surfer. We were watching the uh, the Holly Eva contest and we watched a surfer do a turn and then the wave just caught up to him and he, he fell off. Um, and a good surfer, uh, and, and he, uh, he didn't make that heat. Um, and he was just like, man, if he had the whale fins, he could have kept going. And I don't understand that. <laughs> um, he, and that's one of those things, you know, he, he's felt that and he knows that there's, there's a difference there. So, um, so anyways, some conclusions there. CFD results match nicely with our field research for both the longboard and the shortboard fins. Uh, the CFD helped confirm what surfers feel, helped us start confirming that. I mean, we've got a long ways to go. Surfer experience plus field data plus CFD, I think those are all important in, in evaluating new designs. That's, that's definitely a uh, conclusion there. So some future work that we want to do, hydrofoils. And uh, Luca mentioned showed one of those, but there's lots we can do 
with hydrofoils and you know having that trace a, a funny story of one of my friends he's really good at hydrofoiling and I asked him to put the trace on and you know you think you're going this certain speed or whatever and he put the trace on and he's like how fast was I going and I said 22 miles an hour and he's like so mad he thought he was going like 50 or something and uh, but that's that helps you know um, kind of like you know my fish was this big well did you weigh it or you know um, kind of thing but um, I mean that happens and so you, you you have those numbers but I mean he was at point to point and actually you know we have data now from point to point and that's really fast compared to my longboard at point to point um, so I tried to encourage him there um, but anyway um, and so hopefully you know we can also do even more realistic CFD models for board and fin testing, and maybe you notice, you know, that was the, the water was coming in flat on this, so you would get, you know, some angle to the waves and different things like that. Developing a fin rating system and other standards. Uh, again, I'm sorry, this is a little cut off there, but I've seen like a, a futures fin linear uh, speed control uh, versus um, um, needing speed. Uh, they have kind of a linear numbering system. But if we had something, you know, that included the, the stability that, that we're learning about here uh, with our CFD research and, and rotation and hold. And just briefly here, also we're going to be presenting this in Tokyo at the International Sports Engineering Conference, um, probably. Uh, we don't know 100% yet, but probably we're going to be there in June next year, so before the Olympics. But anyways, this, uh, so, you know, this uh, crinkle fin of Mark's that seemed like that had better hold. Uh, the whale fin, you know, just a different kind of condition there. If you want more maneuverability, maybe that one's better. So, other things to work on. And that is all I have. was seven meters per second, which was, we got that based on kind of our average speeds on the field waves. 15 miles an hour. Yeah. Is that about right? How much line these? What? No, I think that's, I think it's about right, yeah. Good question, though. Yeah, so, and, and we did. We took the, what, what our averages were on the field, um, and that's, what we, that's why we used that. So, yes? I have a question about the other gentleman's presentation about the serrated edge on the forward leading edge of the fence. Is that the great water flow? Yes. Mm -hmm. And you showed it as well. Yeah. Um, so, like, drag, increase drag, great drag. What we found is this reduces drag. And it increases hold. It doesn't change. It increases hold. Yeah. So as you do the turn, um, just that that force, it's just gonna. Um, as you do a turn, it's gonna. It's harder to turn against. So, yeah, it's harder to it's harder to turn against. So if you're surfing in a barrel and you just wanna go, then maybe this is better. I mean, and that's just me thinking about. Thank you. Know, you created more questions than answers. <laughs> okay. Did you have a question? The yeah, calibration you kind of show that it's sort of important to base the fin and I would presume. Is this, is this is that, is that pretty common or is that just that one example? That was those particular fins, all, all three of, of, of those you have designs. A of, of, of that or is that three well, designs and then the way you said it's on two ones and other fins? I have I, that. Um, I know that you know one thing we've seen like with the tubercles and other people's research is that you get cavitation at the tip, uh, which we didn't see on that. But um, that doesn't mean it doesn't do it or whatever. That's just what our CFD showed. But then uh, other people have done uh, multiple studies on the the tubercles, and the deeper you make that channel, the more likely you're going to have cavitation. So that's and and you look at a whale. You look at those tubercles, they, they have a bump and they have a groove in there, but then it stops. It doesn't usually like continue on. And I mean, you know, they need it to live. They've got to have those things working as much as they can all the time. And so it's, it's kind of like they've got that figured out how to keep that cavitation down. Um, and so, 
Yeah, but but we also have found that. It, uh, well, we found that on um, on the crinkles that we got at the you know where those are, we it appeared that that was the place that might first cavitate. But uh, yeah, that cavitation is hard though. It depends on the you know how deep the water is and you know the water pressure. So it's a uh, it's a possibility that that you know potential potential cavitation is greater the deeper your crinkles are. Yeah, so the end result, for so what we want in surfing would be you can go faster and turn harder and not lose momentum on the turner. That's pretty much, I mean, right. that's what we all want. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, so if that whale pattern does that, you know, it just kind of helps you, you know, you don't have as much to push against, which if you don't have as much to push against, then you can crank through that turn, you know, um, and that's another thing we found is that my skill level 8 surfer with the whale fin surfed more like the WCT level, his numbers were 80% of, you know, I, I talked about the 18 different parameters that we had, 80% of those were uh, not significantly different or higher when he used the whale fin, so it's, the whale fins actually helped him surf more like the WCT level surfer than the control did. Okay, well, let's go. Yeah, we'll have more. We can go. Yeah, we'll have to show you.